If you have been wanting to smooth the skin of your photos within Imagine, the time is now. Smooth Skin is here. You can craft the perfect balance of natural beauty with discrete adjustments until you reach your desired goal. As always, you're in complete control. Adjust and customize the smoothness, texture, clarity, and sharpness to reflect your unique style. It seamlessly integrates into your editing process with a single click to ensure a quick and efficient path to flawless polish complexions. Simply open the Imagine app to try Smooth Skin today. I am gonna sneeze at some point. Okay, you just keep that in, it's fine. Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. I'm your host, Scott Wyden-Kifowitz, a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, colorblindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child. Guess what? Workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life. That's why I am so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things Workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that can be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Get to work with Workflows. Vanessa Joy is a distinguished photographer with over 20 years of experience in capturing the essence of events, portraits, and marketing projects. Her remarkable work has graced publications like Yahoo News, Grace Ormonde, and Style Me Pretty. And she's collaborated with renowned companies like Bravo, Canon, and Hilton. Vanessa is a celebrated Canon explorer of light, an honor reserved for a handful of wedding photographers in the U.S. And she's an author of four books on photography and business. As a devoted mother and former Spanish teacher, she brings a unique practical approach to her craft, impacting hundreds of thousands of photographers with her engaging educational content. Now strap in because this conversation, while we start out light, it talks about a very, very important conversation that we believe should be talked about way more in the photography industry. So, like I said, hold on tight. Here we go. Hey, Vanessa. <laughs> As you're Man, t- taking a sip. I'm like, get the coffee last tea? sip in. You know, it's tea. It's usually coffee, but I just wanted something warm. And most importantly, to have my logo nice. present because it matches my background. <laughs> it does. It, you're, very, you're, vi- you're very light and airy today. I am. I am. I transformed the whole office to be light and airy, even though... I mean, I don't think that's my style of photography. I hope, well, not that I hope not. I just, I don't think it is. So I hope my thoughts of my own photography match what (laughs) the perception of my photography is, is what I'm really trying to say. Yeah. But I do like my, my space to be light and airy. Yeah. Makes me happier. (laughs) I would love to brighten up my, my world down here in my basement, but uh, it's very long. My, 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 it's very long. That makes sense. (laughs) So. So it's like, what am I going to do? I got this rolling cart back here that I load up with cameras and I just black out everything behind it. And I'm good. There you go. That so works. So got to do what you got to do. That works. So hey, we're going to have a very, I think it's going to be a fairly deep conversation about something that happened to you and, and well, Rob, Rob was with you, right? Yes. Rob was with you, yeah. your, your model, uh, your model husband, I think My was model's there, right? husband was there. Rob yeah. was there. It really is yeah. phenomenal that it even happened at all. With yes, all the it is. Yeah, large yeah. male presence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna have a we're gonna first before we get into like actually what happened. I'm gonna ask you two other questions. So, what is one of the hardest lessons that you have had to learn when you first got into into photography? I'm gonna go with that. Being a photographer is not necessarily about photography. Mm. That's a hard lesson. That's a hard lesson for a lot of us to realize (laughs) that it's so much about business and creating a client experience and now styling yourself (laughs) to match your (laughs) whatever brand you want to be. And there's so many other things. I just posted something on Instagram today talking about how being a successful photographer has like nothing to do with your great camera or how many Mm. followers you have or how good your pictures are. There are way too many starving artists out there. It's all about 
how you run your business. You know, your clients don't remember the pictures you took as much as they'll remember how long it took you to deliver them. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Nice. Hard lesson. That is a good, that is a good lesson. Speaking of lessons, I, I just got an impromptu question that I did not plan for that somehow popped into my head. So you grew up in New Jersey mm -hmm. and you now live in Texas. I do. And, but you're, you're still coming back and forth for certain jobs, right? I believe, right? I mean, I travel all the time. This past right. year, I traveled right. 120 days out of the year. So I travel constantly. I yeah. don't, I don't like to say that I even left New Jersey in a lot of ways. Yes, I spend my time in much warmer weather, but for lack of the better word, I have like, you know, Twin City businesses, you know, Austin mm -hmm. and New York or where I might bounce yeah. back and forth. I want to say bi-coastal, but Texas <laughs> is not a coast. So I don't know what the equivalent <laughs> is to that, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, by state, yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, a lesson that for anybody who is potentially splitting their time between two locations or moving their entire business to a new location. Any lesson you can share as far as how the heck do you say to your clients, I'm moving to Texas or how do you, <laughs> how do you start not starting over, but sort of starting over, you know, like any lessons as uh, things that you've run into that you've had to figure out. Absolutely. The, the truth is I didn't really tell my clients I moved to Texas I mean, mm -hmm. you see it if you're really following me on social media, but it wasn't like some huge announcement. I didn't want it to be that because I knew that I was going to keep taking jobs in New Jersey. So for me, it's not really their concern, right? I mean, maybe right. it is if they get nervous about people flying in a couple of days before their event, but I've never had a problem, thank God. But it is so daunting, however, if you concentrate on relationships more than anything else, I mean, I could have, and I probably did take out like a wedding wire or the not ad in my new city, but the most I have gotten a return on my investment was the relationships I made. I came mm. and visited before I went. I spent a year, we knew ahead of time, about a year before we moved, and I spent a year coming down and meeting with venue owners and taking planners out for drinks or coffee. And that's not always the best way to have it happen. Like people don't necessarily want to give you the time of day, but some do. And those are the ones that you end up connecting with and will send you work for, I don't know if you're, they're a photographer and they're booked for that day. Mm -hmm. And besides that, it just made my new location feel a little bit more homey when I was moving across the country and didn't know a soul. Right. <laughs> Did, I'm assuming you had some photographer connections already in the Austin area. No. No? I mean, really? None? I don't, I really, no. The one connection that I had is a girl who was in the branding space and we had spoken on different stages together at conferences. So I knew her. She was the only one I really knew. She introduced me to some photographers. I mean, there were definitely photographers in Austin who followed me mm -hmm. and I... Definitely, you know, when I started looking on Instagram for different photographers, I reached out to the ones that followed me back because I knew I'd have a better chance of connecting with them if they at least <laughs> knew I wasn't some lunatic trying to yeah. meet up with them or, I don't know, mooch something off of them. Right, right. Cool. Yeah. All right. So another deep question is, what is one thing that you wish you could change in the photography industry? Oh, you know, it's a there's double. So much. <laughs> well, there's so much. Everyone's a jerk. No, there's a couple of things. I wish, I wish we had a little bit more of a graceful way of transitioning with technology, because I've been in the industry for quite some time. I was. Mm -hmm. I started with film and watched the transition to digital. And we didn't hand it, handle it gracefully. No, we did not. <laughs> People were mad and are still mad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then social media became a thing that needed to happen in most photographers' lives. And we did not handle that gracefully. Now, the AI world is coming and we are not handling it gracefully. And yeah. I understand people's concerns and, you know especially when it comes to maybe you're a retoucher for a living. Mm. And, you know, there are certain things that photographers aren't going to ask you to do anymore because they can do it themselves. I get right. it. But 
you know, there's always innovation and I feel like our industry just doesn't handle it nicely. We're very threatened by change. And <laughs> I don't know if that's a photography industry thing, but I do, I do wish we handled it a little bit better and looked at opportunity and ways to evolve with optimism versus pessimism. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a, like a more of a global thing, but at the same time, I think there's not in the photography industry, there, there's little innovations here and there. There's not a lot of big dramatic ones like film to digital or the AI boom. So when, when the big ones happen, it's like, it stands out, you know? That's true. I could see that. Yeah. They're very large leaps when they do come, yes. come our way. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. Okay. Let's dive into the topic at hand, <laughs> which first, can you give a quick summary? Like, you published the video, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I reached out to you, I think, that day because I was like, I had those like that that shock emoji. My my brain was out of my head. I couldn't believe it actually happened. Yeah. And you got it on film. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain what happened before we dive into some questions about this? I mean, it was really just like a normal day. Like I was doing a shoot with actually a girl that our kids went to school together. I think she's gorgeous and she wanted to get into the modeling space. I'm like, I'll photograph you. We'll have fun. We'll do some cool stuff. And, you know, I won't pay you to be a model, but you actually want these photos. So it's like, a you know, what do they call it? Trade for photos. Mm -hmm. And it was perfect. I'm like, just let me record it. And, you know, we'll make a YouTube video out of the stuff that we do together. I still have more of her stuff coming out later. And, you know, you get all these pictures, we'll build your modeling portfolio. I'll give you some tips on things that I know about, you know, submitting photos to agencies and things like that. Great, wonderful. She's got all these outfits. We go to a place that's not secluded, but it's not crowded either. It's kind of like a boat launch area in Georgetown. So just north of Austin. And there are some people like around. I don't think anything of it. And I start photographing her in one spot. And then we go to another spot where a group of young boys could see. And they start like catcalling, which shouldn't be whatever, but it is whatever because it happens all the time. And definitely more so to my model because, again, she is just like, she is a bombshell. She is just so gorgeous. And, you know, she's brushing it off and and I'm brushing it off and kind of like laughing because her husband who is a former NFL player? Like, this dude is huge. He is so muscular and tall. He is like the guy that you do not want to mess with. So I'm just kind of laughing. In addition, my husband's there, who's basically holding like a monopod and like something that could be a heavy weapon. So I, like, we felt perfectly safe for the most part, but they just wouldn't stop. And it kept going and going and going. And then she was posing on some rocks and she kind of like faltered for a second and then they started getting nasty. And then it was, oh, look, she's drunk. She's just trying to, you know, get up her OnlyFans. Like, look at it. And we actually, believe it or not, took out some of the things that they said because they were calling her names. They were like just being really raunchy and really nasty. Mm. And she handled it so well. And it's funny because it wasn't until a friend of mine, Jana Williams, who's a photographer in L.A., she saw the video and she said, you have to look at her again. Look at how she's handling this. This is not her first time. She knows how yeah. to handle this. And I I didn't realize that until the second time. But I mean, she handled it so well, and, which means it's not her first time, which is really sad, but also really great that she's that strong. Yeah. But her husband went over to talk to them. And again, former, former NFL player, I, I'm like, wow, these guys are totally going to like chill once he gets over there. And he's a big teddy bear. Like he's the nicest guy you will ever meet. I mean, I watch him hold his like baby daughter. <laughs> it's just the cutest thing. He melts like putty. So he goes over there and very nicely asks him to like stop. Like, hey, we're just trying to shoot some pictures. This is my wife. Like, could you just not do that? And they start barking at him. And of course he barks back. He's not going to like let these kids start yelling at him. And it just gets into this whole big thing. And they start coming at us, literally holding rocks from the rocky terrain in their underwear, because that's all that one of them was dressed in, threatening us, threatening to hit us, beat us. And it was like, it, 
oh my gosh, I've never been so scared. Honestly, I yeah. didn't have any weapons. I know everyone thinks it's Texas and we're all just packing, but we're not. <laughs> and we just start walking back to the car and Victoria's like, well, now's a great time for an outfit change. I'm like, okay. And then they follow us and they're following us at the car and they're continuing going on and on. And I mean, I looked at that kid who was holding the rock in his underwear. I thought he had a gun because it is mm -hmm. Texas. And yeah, a lot of people do have, yeah. you know, they're armed. So yeah. I'm looking at Rob like, you just don't even talk to him. Like, just back off. Like, you just, yeah. we got to back up. Like, I don't know if he has a gun. And that my husband asked, like, you got a gun? And he, he was like, what? No. And it wasn't even until later I looked back at the footage that I realized it was a rock he was holding. So, so we... Yeah, oh, it just went on and on and we called the cops and the cops finally came and, you know, basically had to break it up and yell at the kids and, you know, press charges, didn't arrest anybody. And most of them ran away, actually, hmm. <laughs> naturally. One was stupid enough to sit there and fight with a cop. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. I don't even so, want to know what was going through their heads, or why they thought that was the right thing to do to, to anybody. Anyway, but uh, what, I thought it was so, funny, of course. Yeah, I, it's, it's, I don't understand it. I don't understand <laughs> it. But so, um, you at first were just brushing it off. She was just brushing it off. Mm -hmm. What, what was going through your head at first? Were you initially before it like sort of escalated a bit? Were you, were you calm inside your head or were you already getting concerned from the from the out of the gate i mean i wasn't concerned like safety wise at that point it was just mm -hmm. like you know really Why's annoying so and these are and rude and, and young dumb yeah. kids and i'm you know part of your job as a photographer is to make your your subject feel safe whether a model or a family or a couple or whatever yeah. it is you want to make them feel safe and in that moment i'm just trying to like ease the tension so that I can get some halfway decent expressions out yeah. of my model. And it was extremely difficult. And I mean, my heart was definitely racing a little right. bit at that point, but I still felt safe. And it wasn't until mm -hmm. they started advancing that I was like, oh my God, are they yeah. actually going to rob us now? Because that was something that I'd been seeing mm -hmm. a lot lately is photographers just getting mugged for all the expensive right. gear that they have with them. Yeah. Or I don't know, am I driving home to my kids later or am I not? Right, right. So uh, you and I know part of being a professional photographer is being able to handle, shoot, my camera's not working. I got to swap it out and, and not let your client realize something yes. something could have been <laughs> catastrophic to their work, right? But we're not trained for this this kind of situation in theory, right? Like some some are, most are not. So... How did you, as a, as before it escalated and you had to actually go away mm -hmm. and call the police, how did you, as the photographer, what did you do to try to stay focused and, and, and try to keep prompting your, you know, the model to pose in different directions and, and whatnot, right? So how did you, do, how did you focus and, and whatnot? You know, I just, I wouldn't look at them. I just kept my focus on Victoria and, you know, having her look at me and, you know, giving her prompts. Humor is a big thing for me. I'm always trying to joke around with my clients anyway. So I'm just trying to get her to laugh a little bit maybe or concentrate more on what she's doing with her body versus them. And there is a point, I think, in the video where you hear me say like, oh, just laugh at the fact that like their husband's here and, you know, <laughs> he's no match. I am. I am guessing that I try not to assume too much, <laughs> even though I already did use the word once today. I am guessing that at some point afterwards, maybe after you left, maybe the next time you saw her, you guys had a conversation privately about what happened. And what was the type of things that you just, if you're okay sharing that, what yeah. type of things did you discuss with her privately about the situation to make sure she was comfortable Felt safe, felt safe and comfortable for future sessions, for example. I mean, again, she was just someone that was somewhat used to it. So it wasn't as big of a deal on her end. She was just like, mm -hmm. whatever. She was brushing it off there. Even while the cops were coming and we we're all like hiding in the car. She's like, well, I guess I'll change outfits. Let's just keep going. So I spoke to her about that. Like, I couldn't believe how strong yeah. she was in that 
moment and she felt perfectly safe. Granted, the next time that we did something together was inside a studio (laughs) and a little bit more (laughs) private. And there goes my son. I'm sorry. I'm the worst. Then it goes two stop starter. Really? Really? Okay. I swear I know what I'm doing. And the um, other thing was yeah. I had to ask her, like, are you okay with me making a YouTube video out of that? Because, mm-hmm. of course, I want awareness around yeah. that. And yeah. irritatingly enough, actually, everywhere I posted it, downplayed it because they don't want to show things with violence, which I can appreciate not wanting to show things with violence. But when it's something like that, it's an awareness thing. People need to yeah. see that kind of thing that happens to understand how to handle it or to have discussions about it. Sorry, yeah. I know you see random people and noise. It's all good. It's all good. I am a working photographer working out of my home. <laughs> you, you were just saying about down, companies downplaying it, right? Or like mm-hmm. the where you posted it, yeah. everything being downplayed. I think that this would have been a perfect opportunity for imaging or WPPI to be like, what other photographers have experienced this? Let's have a panel. Like, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to to do this is like, I don't want to downplay this. This is a big freaking deal. Mm-hmm. And that's why I wanted to do an, a, an episode dedicated to this topic because it needs to be talked about more, whether it's at trade shows, whether it's in media like this or, mm-hmm. or something else. So I'm glad that she was comfortable with you doing the video. I'm glad that you did the video. And I, my hope is that we can play a small role in getting it out more to the photography world and beyond. Yeah. I would um, love that. So. Just, you know, like I said, it's similar to some of the other things that have been going on, which are photographers just getting mugged in yeah. public places. There's also photographers, you know, who have their cars broken into a lot and granted, Mm -hmm. You can get into don't leave your stuff in the car. But the truth is you have to have a level of safety precautions at this point. If you are bringing your gear out in public, if you're subjecting your models or, you know, clients to an outdoor atmosphere, that's not the privacy of their backyard. It is a topic that needs to come up. And Petapixel was actually the only one that would talk about it. And I did go to a lot of other prominent blogs and other places too and they're the only ones that would even touch it that's really interesting Mm -hmm. that is really interesting i'm actually not surprised that petapixel did pick it up but i am surprised that the others did not so yeah yeah i was just kind of met with like oh so sorry that happened to you bye (laughs) okay well nice (laughs) i'm glad that we're i'm glad that we're doing this at least i can't speak for them but (laughs) so has this experience changed your perception on shooting in public spaces? I It hasn't. At least it hasn't changed my actions, right? I'm mm-hmm. still going to shoot in public places. I still have clients that want to go to specific areas, weddings especially. I just keep my eye out a little bit more now. When I know that I'm going to a park, I'm not going to bring anything that I can't carry on my back. I'm not Mm going to have like that suitcase that somebody could potentially steal. It was actually Mm -hmm. funny. I just did a photo workshop in Italy. I have one coming up in Croatia this year. And one of the guys there, Paul Cole, he had a chain on his wrist that chained his bag to him because he had seen Manny Ortiz had that happen to him. Just all, he was doing a shoot and without even noticing it, he was in Italy, all his gear got stolen. And it was a roller, a roller? It, yeah, I think it was a roller. Mm. So now for me, it's always like, yeah. nope, this just always stays on my back. Yeah. And I usually have an assistant with me at all times. And part of their job is to be very aware of the gear and yeah. what's happening around me, you know, so that I can be more engaged with my client. But I definitely yeah. see these things a little bit differently. I, I look at yeah. environments a little bit differently. So my next question was going to be what kind of precautions, measures you're taking. Obviously, that is one of them, being more aware of your surroundings and mm-hmm. changing how you're carrying your gear. I think that's a big, you know, a big step. So I wonder, are you thinking about any self-defense type of things to keep on you? So 
in all honesty, I've carried that before. I can show you what I carry if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> it's not a gun, sure. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> So a friend of mine actually gave this to me a few years ago because it's super simple. And I am not under the impression that I'd be winning any fights, but I'd like to at least have somewhere to go, something, something to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this, it hooks right on a necklace and you can wear it underneath and it's just a quick, <laughs> of course, like, do what they think in front of me, a quick pull and it's just like mm -hmm. the knuckles. So I do carry this with me fairly often but if i fly somewhere i don't ever check bags so i can't yeah. carry something like this i mean yeah. mace i i don't carry that that's a liquid i can't carry that on a plane so i do a little bit but honestly in my head while i'll wear something like that the best weapon i have is already in my hands because yep. that camera with the 20 to 70 on it let me tell you that thing <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that is a blunt object that can do yep. some damage <laughs> i i think it was about Probably about three years ago at this point, I did a YouTube video on self-defense as a photographer hmm. and talked about how if you have a monopod or if you have a tripod, if yeah. you have an L bracket on your camera, that'll hurt. Yep. Lots of things like that. And, and yeah, definitely like what you have on you, just knowing how to utilize it in a worst case scenario, I think is important. I will say, though, I don't I think I already have it packed because I'm this focused AF is coming up. So I have a bunch of stuff packed, including not that I expect to need it there but i have a, a tactical pen and oh, it like is a john wick style like, <laughs> <laughs> it is a it is a, a pen that is like a titanium type material so it is a very strong metal that's super lightweight and it is a pen a fully functional pen but the tip one end is a window breaker for oh, a car yep the other yep. end is a a if you hit somebody they're going to bleed <laughs> type of type of, of of thing <laughs> you can you can touch it with your finger and it won't hurt but if you were to hit somebody with it it would hurt and so that that is something that i've i've started carrying in my pocket just because like mm -hmm. i don't like um firearms but yeah. i'm okay carrying something like that on a daily basis so uh, also yeah. i mean i've taken self-defense courses before mm -hmm. And there's a lot on there that you can fairly easily teach yourself and practice on like your pillow or chair or something like yeah. that. That can just help you be more aware of like, you know, if you, a physical alteration happens, which for the record, I would never engage in one. Like you mm -hmm. will see what I do in that video. I walk away, like yeah. I walk yeah. away, get my car. I am not engaging Ever. Yeah. But if it's self-defense, there are certain things that you can do to make sure that you're not hurt as much as you possibly could be. So yeah. it's a it's a lot you can do. I mean, even people who are like trained high level, you know, uh, um, uh, BJJ or, or MMA people, whatever, they still their their goal, if they get into a into into a, a potential fight on the street, their goal is not to fight. Their goal is to get away, even trained professionals. So there's no reason that any photographer should get into a fight. It's just good to know in a worst case scenario, if you have absolutely no option, what to do. How to, yeah, uh, how to how protect to, yourself. How to protect yourself. Yep. Also, gear can always be replaced. I know it's expensive. Yep. I know it's your babies, but yep. those are secondary. Those are yep. just things, not lives. And in my, and for anybody who's listening and wants to know a very good tip, and this, this might sound like, oh, that's obvious, but some people may not be so obvious. So I, I, I study a, a traditional martial art. I go twice a week. And every single class, our instructor drills one thing into our head. If you're in a fight, there is one thing that is extremely important to protect at all times. And that's your head. That's it. Protect your head. Elbows. Your elbows. elbows. Just get them in front. <laughs> our other instructor says elbows in to win. There you go. Another tip for you. <laughs> so, Okay. My last question to you about this topic is, can you share any, a lot has been shared already in even to answer this question, but any final tip that you could share, some advice or tip for photographers who may face a similar challenge, even if a model winds up listening to this, similar challenge, how would you recommend to handle the situation? Any, any other tips that you can share besides get away? 
Because yeah. that one we got. Yeah. That one we got. I mean, we did try it in the beginning where you're just like, smile about it, like kill them with kindness. Mm -hmm. I know even like when I'm walking around by myself in New York, I'll mm -hmm. have people start talking to me or kind of cat call me. I don't actually ignore them. I smile and I say thank you mm -hmm. because I feel like that, you know, you ignore them and now you're a challenge, right? But you just smile and say thank you and that's it. And you just keep walking. So I find that if you're in that situation and you're not dealing with people who are inebriated or somehow otherwise mentally altered, then, um, you know, just, just smile, say thank you and move on. And like, that's it. And even though they're, may or may not be being disrespectful to you, you can show a little respect to them and that might get you out of the situation as yeah. opposed to, you know, ignoring them or just walking away. It's kind of like with dogs, right? You you have one running at you, you should actually stand still, not run away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's similar. Would you if you were to re if you had to relive that situation today, would you have called the police earlier? We called the police right away, actually. Oh, you did? Well, okay. we called not when they were far off and cat calling, because to me, that's not physically threatening. And again, you shouldn't have to, but like we deal with it all the time. I'm not calling the cops yeah. on everyone that cat calls, you know, right. me and my model. But the second they started advancing, it was, it was immediate, absolutely okay, immediate. Good. It just took them 15 minutes to get there. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Austin, Texas. <laughs> yeah, well. It was often like a random boat ramp, so <laughs> okay. in their defense. <laughs> well, th that's that's what I, I wanted to just, you know, spend time with you, talk about this, bring some light to it. I think you shared a lot of good things for, for, for anybody who's potentially in, the, in that situation to keep in the back of their minds. And any any final words you want to share before we before we sign off on, on this topic? Or? I, don't, I think you covered it all. We're pretty good there. Nice. And if you want to go watch the video, just check out my YouTube. Mm -hmm. It is not the most viewed video, so but you could sort it by that, and it's somewhere near the top. Um, I'll, I'll include it in the show notes for sure. Oh, It'll perfect. be in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you want to leave a comment, I know Victoria, myself, like we both look at it, and the supportive comments that we have received are really, really helpful. I've definitely received a couple that were not so supportive, mm. believe it or not, but the supportive ones are just really nice. They're so reassuring. Awesome. So thank you for joining me. Where I will link to your YouTube, of course, and especially to this video. Where else can everybody who's listening find your website, your socials, all that fun stuff? The easiest place to go to is vanessajoy.com, V-A-N-E-S-S-A-J-O-Y.com. And there, you know, if you're a photographer, there is a for, I think it says photographer EDU or something like that. And you can go to a photography site that has a bunch of freebies on it. It also links my YouTube channel, which has, you know, hundreds of videos on there. And most, where I hang out social wise, I'm usually on Instagram. Is that where you are too? Do, I feel like most photographers hang out on Instagram. Yeah, I think most are on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we, we, we try not to, I guess, but we still wind up being there anyway. <laughs> yep. Got no choice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You have been listening to Workflows, presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows, to find links to our guests, and for an exclusive offer for Workflows listeners, please go to imagineai.com slash podcast. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.